Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this webcast, part of MHPN's online conference, Working Better Together. We're really delighted that uh, you've joined us for this. Uh, this webcast is part of a, a content stream uh, around uh, trauma, the impact of adverse childhood experiences. And um, yeah, my name's Chris Dolman. I'm from Emerging Minds, the National Workforce Centre for Child Mental Health. And yeah, really delighted, as I said, that uh, you've been able to join us uh, for this hour. Um, so yeah, welcome to those that are sort of um, are listening to this live, as well as those that will be uh, viewing this uh, later uh, as a recording. Uh, before we go further, I'd like to um, acknowledge the uh, traditional owners of the lands on which uh, we are today, on uh, the lands in which uh, you're viewing this from, and um, really uh, pay our respects to um, uh, elders past and present and emerging, and uh, acknowledge the ongoing uh, connection that um, the traditional custodians have uh, with those lands. I'd like to uh, continue by also uh, introducing uh, our panel today. Um, we have a group of um, uh, parents with lived experience who are joining us today to uh, contribute their skills and know-how and experience and uh, perspectives around the topic uh, for today. So um, uh, welcome to Colleen Hi. and uh, to Emmy. Thanks, Chris. And uh, John, thanks so much uh, thanks, for yeah really contributing to our school development as practitioners. It's really a very um, very generous um, gesture. So thanks thanks so much uh, for that. Um, I'd like to sort of uh, turn now to the uh, learning outcomes uh, that we'll be um, orienting our conversation around today. Um, so the first of these is um, uh, to enable you to. Um, uh, gather an understanding of the challenges faced by parents facing adversity when they present at services. You know, what is it that, that worries them and, and how can uh, practitioners respond to these worries, the, these concerns as well. We'll also be exploring some of the uh, practices um, that practitioners can engage in to support uh, parent-child relationships to overcome the adversities that they're facing. And also how practitioners can support parents through adversity you know, while still maintaining a focus on the uh, uh, social and emotional well-being of their children as well. So um, th this um, uh, webinar, webcast will be focused around uh, four common uh, challenges faced by practitioners. We've gathered these from uh, feedback and comments and questions from previous webinars that um, Emerging Minds has conducted in partnership with MHPN, as well as from our consultations um, with other services as well, in terms of you know, what is it that um, practitioners are really wanting to understand uh, around uh, working with parents in relation to adversity. So um, in terms of looking at the, um, some of these uh, common practice challenges, uh, that these include um, uh, practice challenges in relation to working with parents around child protection concerns, how practitioners can respond when parents are, you know, speaking um, uh, negatively or ambivalently about their children. Um, how practitioners can support parents who are facing multiple adversities uh, to remain hopeful and helpful, um, hopeful and mindful of their their children, helpful in terms of their children's well-being. And also how um, practitioners can support parents to maintain a focus on their children's uh, social and emotional well-being. Um, uh, without uh, feeling stigmatised um, by their experiences of adversity. So, gosh, there's a bit there, folks. We hope to sort of uh, to uh, touch on uh, some of those, or we will be touching on those themes as we, as we talk today. There's a few things um, that I'd like to let you know about in terms of, um, uh, as participants, that will um, sort of um, add to your involvement in this webcast. The first is that you're really welcome to uh, submit a question uh, to our panel. We'd really welcome those. Um, and you can do that by clicking on a tab in the bottom uh, right-hand corner of your screen. You'll see, a, you'll see a tab there. Click on that, submit the question, and uh, away we go. <coughs> also, there is um, uh, some supporting resources as well, um, and these can be found on the, um, on the resources uh, tab, again, in the, uh, the bottom corner of your, your screen. If you've got any uh, technical concerns, there's a technical support, frequently asked questions tab as well. Uh, you'll find that in the, um, the top of your screen. <coughs> And um, uh, yeah, just a reminder to um, uh, click on the full screen view option. Um, that'll work much better uh, in terms of being able to kind of um, uh, see our, and uh, be a part of our conversation uh, here today. 
Okay. Oh, and there is also a um, uh, an exit survey uh, form. It'd be great if you could um, complete that survey as well. That helps us. Uh, I guess it helps us ultimately uh, get better at what we do. So yeah, please um, spend some time completing that. There's a tab for that at the top, top of your screen as well. So um, I think I'm done really in terms of the, the housekeeping yeah. stuff. Have I covered off everything you think? I think yeah. so. Okay, yeah. great. Done so, well. Uh, <laughs> so um, we'd like to sort of, um, I think we might as well get into it really yeah, sure. and, and mm, begin to have a look at uh, some of these uh, practice challenges that um, really that um, our practitioners have, have raised. So the first one is um, is in around uh, child protection, really, and it's um, a common question that's asked around, you know, how can practitioners have conversations with parents about child protection concerns, you know, without shaming or silencing or alienating mm. parents? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I really appreciate this question because I think it, um, it indicates that um, practitioners are concerned mm. about yeah. silencing and shaming uh, parents, but are also um, know something about the importance of raising child protection concerns yep. as well. So, um, John, Emmy, Colleen, you know, from your experience, your inside knowledge of this, like um, from a parent's perspective, what kind of is important for you in terms of how practitioners respond to that or work towards that? What comes to mind for you? Um, I think something that's quite important is to just be upfront about about what's going on. Okay. Um, yeah. So when it's a conversation about child protection, just to be upfront, um, okay. it's most parents are well aware of um, child protection issues mm -hmm. um, that yeah. it's going to be on the table or it's, you know something that is going to be um, an issue. Yeah. Um, and silence and shame is already present. Right. Um, mm. So there's not a lot you can do about that. Um, okay. So just stick into, you know, well, this is something that we need to talk about. Um, if this happens, um, you know, this is going to be a child protection matter. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's no point yeah. beating around the bush with okay. it. Because yeah. mm. you were talking about, with your experience, what really helped was when they said, this is the point at which it becomes a child protection issue. Absolutely. So you knew yes that if you were in this space, everything was okay. Yes. But if it got, if things got out of that space, it would be a reportable, and you found that helpful, I found that very you? helpful. Um, because from my experience, um, when uh, you're in that situation where you're facing a lot of adversity, um, you're quite, kind of overwhelmed with issues. Um, you've got your children with you. Um, well, mostly, not always, mm. but, or if you are hoping to have them with you, um, then you kind of, you need to do a bit of handing over. So in my own experience, I really had the, I really wanted to be able to hand over that, that issue. I felt that I wasn't able to keep my children's needs at the forefront because I was so overwhelmed with what I was already going through. Mm. Um, so to know that that practitioner, that's mm. what their job is, they're versed in child protection issues, um, that I could hand that over to them. They will let me know, um, mm. you know, what's going on now is a child protection issue um, and we're gonna to have to make a notification. If that came up, well, that's good to know. I really mm. needed to have that ability. Right, right. So, so the knowledge, so having the information. Information, being and then, informed, yes. Yeah, and then that gave you... Yeah, it gave me confidence. And then well, it gives you a space that you can move around in. Yes. Um, so then you can start to, to deal with some of the other things that yeah. are going on. Mm. So, so I think the message that Emmy was saying is don't beat around the bush. Right, okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. Just be up put, put, put it out there mm -hmm. and... and, mm -hmm. and make the parent feel that the doctor or the GP or the practitioner yeah. is is really there to help mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe just oh, you know uh, reinforcing that you mm -hmm. know this is the information I'm here to help you so mm -hmm. you know what do we want out of this yeah. what, what what can we do to get the best outcome for you yeah yeah mm -hmm. and it's almost the opposite of um of not of um, being careful about shaming. If you're if you're pretending that it's not an issue, that's almost shaming in itself. That's right. Um, it's like you know I'm, I'm not going to talk about this because I don't trust you with this knowledge, um, because you're obviously not capable of, oh, of okay. managing this kind okay. of thing. Mm. But it sounds to me that um, somehow the practitioner has got in your corner. So Absolutely. it seems like there's an alliance where mm. you're both interested. Because yes, I mean, you're working, as a parent, together. your number one priority is your children, your children. anyway. Yes. So Absolutely. if you see someone as, as in alliance with that, yeah. because I think a lot of people see this issue as 
they're in the opposition corner yeah, and it's not there's enough a struggle. It, yeah. it really yes. isn't. But, and but the practitioner must have at some point built that strategic alliance, that therapeutic alliance with you. They mm. must have had some, some some trust and support. And I think Not always though. Not always, yeah. yeah. But even when that it isn't there, you can still quickly um, kind of put it on the table so that you know, you know that um, it's not us and them. We're working together. Yeah. You know, yeah, child protection. So it's about it, it's about positioning yourself yeah, yeah. in alliance with what yeah. the um, what the parent is really concerned about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And also, um, what kind of language you use? You yeah. know, being very careful about, uh, you know, not using judgmental, shaming, shaming yeah. stigmatising sort of language. Absolutely. Because one of the things for me that stands out here is that whenever we're dealing with a practitioner or someone in authority is the power imbalance. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. And there's, there's power structures all the way through there and that can be really um, uh, concerning for parents. That yes. the, they, mm. Well, essentially they have the power to take your children away yeah, or you feel that way anyway. Yeah, that, yeah. Exactly, yeah. so I think if the it's practitioners the can try and address that power, so, I mean, we've got to go to their offices, they're wearing uniform, they, yeah. they're, they're experts, they yeah. have authority, they they're can report, us. that sort yes. of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think if, if practitioners can be aware of that power imbalance and seek to strategically try and um, align themselves with us as peers, if you like, yes. um, or try and reduce that imbalance, mm. then I think parents are more likely to be open. And Yeah. 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 Well, what have you found helpful in that, John, as a parent, you know, just in terms of what practitioners have done in working with you that have um, had, had them, you know, seeking to mitigate that power difference a bit? Are there yeah. particular things that come to mind um, for you? One, one practitioner said something which is beautiful to me because I was struggling with a lot of, um, and I think uh, men in particular struggle with this whole anger, frustration. I mean, we might have depression, anxiety, but it, it, the overt emotion is anger. Mm. And um, one practitioner said to me, she said, you can, you can shout, you can swear, you can you say whatever you like, just don't break my stuff or, um, or harm me and right. it's all good. Okay. So she was giving me the opportunity to just be authentic in how angry I was about my situation and, and that, was, that was beautiful. Right, mm. okay. Yeah. So that, yeah. She's inviting authenticity. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So really, yeah, I mean, if, if they're upfront about it, then they're not silencing it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. it's a fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's yeah. let's work with this. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yes. So um, uh, yeah, being upfront means there's not a silence. Doesn't kind of yes. perpetuate the silence yeah. around that. And, and Emmy, I was also when you was talking a bit about how um, pretending it's not an issue is shaming in itself. I found mm. that a really interesting mm. yeah, comment. Mm. Because look, in so many situations, um, well, for my again, my own experience. Um, you, you know, you go, you're dealing with adversity, you've had a traumatic incident, you ha your children are, are part of your life, so they're experiencing that to some degree too. Um, you know that child protection um, is an issue. You know um, it's on the table. Um, you know, uh, you've seen other people be affected by this. So what's the point of pretending it isn't? Mm -hmm. And what's mm. the point of pretending it's not part of the conversation? So it's the elephant in the room. If you're pretending yes. it's not happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, you need to say, well, I, I trust you with this knowledge, you know, yeah. you're capable, mm. you're an adult, mm. you're managing things. Well, when you say right. you need to say that, are you saying that people should just imply that or actually be more explicit? Yeah, explicit. Be explicit, absolutely. You're actually yeah. giving the parent credibility when you actually, you know, are honest and upfront. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then that also invites a conversation of honesty and authenticity, um, which is what you really need to look for is so honesty. You're, you're wanting parents to be authentic and not yes. open and honest, so you've got to Yes, you've, you've got, got to, to mirror that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 And that's I was good. Yeah, yeah, that's good. There's something about that, Colleen. That, yeah, strikes a chord with yeah, you. Yeah, I think uh, because the parent in those uh, circumstances is, I mean, you know, they're already feeling the shame, yeah. the guilt, yeah. the, the the low self-esteem, yeah. uh, the the extreme worry about their children, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. So really, if that's if the if the practitioner can can really give them some good good information mm. that they can work with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's the key. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, it, and if that trust is built, then they can um, really build on that and then, mm. you know, really, really help someone. 
Yeah. <laughs> and it's not like, I don't think that mm. it's going to be that, you know, the practitioner says, well, if you do this or this or this, it's going to be, a, you know, a notification. So all of a sudden the parent is going to, you know, withhold that information. I don't think that's going to happen. Mm. The parent wants to, ha to have the best thing for the child. Mm. You know, for me, having that knowledge is really useful um, because that gives me a framework and a guideline and a boundary. Mm. Mm. Um, and, you know, I think, well, if the worst comes to worst and I'm just failing my children, I know that you know there are these frameworks and guidelines and boundaries that have been put in place by professionals who know what they're doing. This is their job, mm. and they can take over. Um, and it gives me a bit of a safety blanket. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I know John, you were sort of asking uh, Emmy some questions and Colleen some questions before a bit about kind of um, you know what it is that has to um, precede the upfrontness in a way in a conversation with people. And you, you were wondering a bit about whether there's some other things that need to be spoken about in terms of the parents' experience or um, beyond the adversities? Yeah, and I guess this, uh, for me, it's the idea of that therapeutic alliance kind of thing. It's, mm, it's building right. trust and rapport. I, I just think it's absolutely critical. Mm. And um, it, sometimes it can be challenging to do, particularly if, you, if you're a practitioner with a huge caseload, mm. to build that trust and rapport. But it, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you've, got yeah. to, you've got to listen to people's story. Yeah. That's mm. the key yes, you yeah. to it. With, while being non-judgmental okay. as well. Mm. Okay, yeah. yeah. And that somehow makes the upfrontness around child protection concerns more possible in a way? Yeah, absolutely. More, I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. 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 It creates yeah. an empathy, isn't it? Mm. Doesn't yeah. it? If, if you're willing to listen to somebody's story mm. history, exactly. you say, oh, I'm, I'm empathetic with you. Yeah. Um, and yeah. there's compassion in this room. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I suppose that's one of the risks mm. that practitioners face themselves is you listen to all these stories, so many stories. You, and if you did it for a long time, and I suppose in this child protection area, there is quite a high burnout among practitioners, mm. um, particularly in the government services, um, child safety services in Tasmania. Um, so it, it can be really tough to listen to those stories and to ask more about those stories and have the patience for those stories to come mm. out. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's absolutely essential yeah. to do. Yeah, I think mm, so as well. Yeah. Ah, should we have a look at some other yep. challenges now? Yeah. Or yeah. Is there other things that people yeah. wanted to say? Yeah. <coughs> Okay, so we had um, the, the next um, challenge we thought we'd take a closer look at, again, coming from previous webinar questions, is, um, yeah, how can practitioners uh, respond to parents where the parent is holding, you know, very negative opinions or feelings towards a child, you know, that are adversely affecting the child's well-being? So again, I think, you know, many practitioners would um, be familiar with this, that um, in meeting with parents at times, um, parents yeah, speak in ways about their own children that um, uh, might be hard to hear. <laughs> and so uh, practitioners find themselves wanting to respond uh, to this. Um, uh, yeah, but take care around how they respond to these sentiments of parents, I guess. So again, you know, like um, uh, how can practitioners respond to parents when, when parents are saying, you know, expressing very negative views about a child? that we could make a guess would be impacting on the child's well-being if they were mm. Mm. present in the home or in their relationship mm. with the child? Well, what comes yeah. to mind? Yeah. Well, firstly, I mean, the parent, yes, I, I mean, the practitioner would then realise that the parent, obviously realise that the parent is, the, the negativity is really coming from the parent. It's mm -hmm. not because the child is bad. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it's really about addressing um, Mm. Where, where where the parent is and also breaking it down mm. into the, the the relationship with the with the child okay, okay. and mm. and pulling out some positives okay. mm. yeah, yeah. you know even daily things that 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 they they, that they can discuss and that mm -hmm. possibly mm -hmm. the parent does enjoy mm -hmm. doing with the child mm -hmm. yeah. um, yeah. can I just come back to what you said when you said you know um, the negativity is coming from the parent it's not the child that's bad like well, why did you want to be so clear about that Colin? well um, I, I mean not going on uh, I mean I I suffered from postnatal depression with both of my children quite severely and was hospitalized and unfortunately the terrible byproduct with that is that you have a disconnection with your child mm. and um, you feel that the child almost doesn't belong to you and that generally the child is creating all the problems. Mm. Okay. Um, so there can be some resentment towards a child as yes, well. Yes, resentment and you, there's a lot of blame 
Yeah. When you're unwell, there's a lot of blame okay. and it's all the child's fault. Okay. Yeah. And and it's not at all. Right. No. Okay. It's because you're unwell. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And so that for you that's important that practitioners kind of get that. I, yeah, I think I, I think if if a if a parent's coming in and they're having issues with the child, mm -hmm. uh, you always have to look at the parent. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. How's the parent coping? Okay. Where where's the parent at? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because yeah. that's the parent is the key, mm -hmm. the, 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 the such important part of the the parent child relationship yeah, okay, okay. and so that that has to be looked up looked at and it can be even started off subtly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just at, uh, seeing how the well-being is of the parent mm -hmm. and then um, working towards the relationship with the child right right yes. um, okay. my other thing mm. is um, mm. if, if that trust is built with the practitioner yeah. um, depending but sometimes bringing the parent in, the child in with the parent mm. yeah. together. Okay. And yeah. seeing how that relationship how is. Are. And then a lot of the time the practitioner then can really um, emphasise um, the positives there. Yeah, and there that again, that, on that, the that, spot. That okay. There's already okay. a positive relationship right. there. Okay. Yeah. But a lot of the time the parents, mm. the parents it, that, that's struggling, mm. It, it looks differently in their mind. Yeah, okay. So they would have some direct evidence then of um, positive relationships mm. and positive interactions that they yeah. can draw on mm. yeah. um, and put into history mm. um, with that mm. family. When you say put into history, what, what do you mean? Um, mm. Lock it in, you know, like oh. it can be referred back to. So oh. I, you know, I yep. remember when you, know, you were together that I saw this or this or I heard you talk about this yep. and this. These are actual things that have happened yeah, that right. they can draw on. It's nice when on. they do that because then you can see that there's a trajectory that you're actually improving or go, getting yes, somewhere yes, with this. Yep. Whereas as a parent. In the, yes, yeah, because yeah, right. in the moment you feel like this is not getting anywhere, mm -hmm. it's Groundhog Day, same, same, yeah. Oh, yeah. same crap, different sure, date. Sure. Sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. For someone to say, you know what, this was happening six months ago, it's not happening anymore. Yes. This was happening three That's months right. ago, it's yeah. not happening anymore. So you think, oh, okay, I actually am making progress, I'm not just treading water. Yeah. But yeah. on this whole emotion thing, I, I don't yeah. reckon yeah. there'd be too many parents around that have not felt resentment to their children, oh, even if they course. didn't have a mental yeah. illness. Of course. Um, yeah. So, but it's not, you can, where, who do you talk to about the fact that you resent your child? It's just, there isn't you can't, a space it's unspoken, it. you mm. can't say that. Yeah. It's like you're a horrible parent. So, and we all, like parenting is a competitive sport these days. Yeah. You yes. just, you know, when you're taking kids to school, you're looking around and, and mm. they're doing this and they're doing that, and then you're thinking, I'm not doing any of those things, I really need yeah. to lift my game. So. <laughs> You know, yeah. guilt, shame, resentment, I'm a bad parent, all that sort of stuff, it kind of almost goes with parenting. Mm. But it's really important to normalise these emotions, I think, because yes. we're all feeling it, but yeah. nobody is talking about it. So I think for That's a practitioner right. to say, you know what, to feel resentment as a parent is really, really common and it's really, really normal. normal. Yeah, that's but right. sometimes that emotion can, can have an impact on your relationship with your child. So let's deal with it. Let's talk mm. about it. Let's let's work out where it's coming from. Let's give you some skills around managing that resentment. Yeah. Yep. So and for a bloke, um, right. before I had a mental illness, I had no emotional literacy whatsoever. If you had have asked me how I was feeling, I would have said all right, or I would have said bit shit, something like that. And neither yep. of those are feelings. Mm. No. So when you start talking to a, a dad about are you feeling guilt? Are you feeling shame? Are you feeling resentment? I'd be going, I don't know. So. Mm. for a practitioner to give men uh, some emotional literacy because mm. if you can't get them to acknowledge how they're feeling, how do you work with it? Right. Um, yeah. I and mean, maybe it's a little bit easier for you guys to say, oh, okay, I am feeling resentment. But I think we've got yeah. to give people some emotional skills around yes. managing difficult emotions. Yeah. You know, acceptance, commitment, therapy, we talked about some mindfulness stuff about emotions yeah. and not gravitating to hard towards those emotions. Yeah, yeah. And, Being able yeah. to stand back and be objective with them. Yeah. 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 And that also brings the idea of actually giving the parents some basic skills yep. as well. Absolutely. Um, maybe yes. they need some basic skills with some child manage management issues. Um, maybe there is an actual issue which the child might have a medical issue that needs to be addressed that can come out in these conversations. Yes. Um, so I think that also needs to be um, looked at too. Yeah. Um, why actually is the yeah. parent so negative? 
where is, is it, it where is it coming where's from? it actually coming yeah, from yeah tell me your story yeah. Yeah. yeah is that what you mean like where, tell me your story or where where's where's the, the, um, something about the negative emotions where's yeah, it coming from is, what were you meaning is that? there yeah. an actual um, issue with the child um, that is creating some behavioral yep. problems yep. that yep. needs to be looked at um, do they need a referral or is it something else yeah um, so you mm. know just dig a little bit deeper and so find some out. practical strategies can help as well because I mean one of the things that I was just uh, I, feel, I felt a lot of shame over was how I punished my children and um, because they just used to wind me up. So it was more about my anger and, and anxiety going through the roof and then punishing them out of that. But if I had have had a practitioner with me to give me some strategies about how I could manage that, you know, they're in the back yeah. seat, they're carrying on and I'm pulling over yeah, and what do you do? wanting to thump the kids. You yeah, know? So yeah. can someone please give me some strategies around this? And then I might not feel so much shame yeah. Resentment towards the kids, etc. So it can be really practical okay. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can I ask for like quite a um, particular sort of situation though, where a parent really, you know, is quite say derogatory towards a child mm. Yeah. Mm. in speaking with a practitioner, and the words are just hanging there. Mm. Mm. I, like, yeah. what is well, a practice, well, well, from your perspective? Uh, what's important for a practitioner to do when those words are hanging well, there? But you know, that if we're a child and the practitioner's thinking maybe this is affecting how. Yeah. How Sometimes a parent doesn't even realise that they're speaking in this way. No. Well, I mean, uh, for me, I. Oh, whoops. For me, I did have. Um, I had a lot of professional help, um, and I found there are a few things um, that really worked for me. Uh, they would film me with with my child. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. So um, when I was quite unwell, oh. and I actually was able to look back and go, oh my God, you, you were actually doing okay. Mm. You, why were you giving yourself such a hard time? Mm. Okay. So, but again, so, so that really helped. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I got a lot of skills, developed, slowly developed a lot of skills yeah. with the help that yeah, I lovely. got, mm. yeah. which was um, to really uh, slow it down, um, and and just just maybe do one thing, right. just do one thing with your child um, that that you like to do, um, and just okay. creating that little bond. Okay. Um, yeah, and you were up to for break that. it up. You were open for that, well, or you think yeah, it's possible it that parents it can helped. be open it for helped. that. Yeah, sure. mm. And it isn't easy initially, mm -hmm. um, but it did help to change mm -hmm. change the feelings, etc. But um, in saying that, yeah, I mean the child, you know, when, when you're unwell, the child I think is affected. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if the child is old enough, I think again you bring the child in yeah. to the practitioner, into the conversation the and giving them the right information. Right, mm -hmm. okay. That it's, it's, it's really not the child's fault, yeah. mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. just where the parent's at mm -hmm. and we can work together mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, do some, have yeah. some fun. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you know, at the end of the day, the child wants to have fun, mm -hmm. and Colin, you know, did you did you learn to be more compassionate towards yourself in any of this? Slowly, process? very, it's very slow. slowly. Do, has yeah. anyone ever been proactive about helping you to be compassionate about yourself as a parent? Yeah, yes. Because I, I think that's something that could be done. Yes, for parents, yes. To help I mean, be really, with with mm. with the help, the yeah, professional definitely. help that I got, that yeah. was really. One of the keys yeah, lovely. Um, was to really um, be kind to yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then you can you can you know and give yourself time out. Mm -hmm. The other thing is a lot of the time this parent or if a parent has negative um, feelings towards a child, a lot of the time if it's a single parent family, yep. single parent, they're very overwhelmed That's just with the job. Yeah. It's and relentless. it's relentless. It yeah. doesn't end. It's no. twenty four seven. It's incredible. And even if some breaks can be uh, like as in breaks from parenting. I love the idea of giving yourself a time out. I remember when my first child was young and um, you know when they get too tired, you haven't put them down early enough, yeah, they've yeah, yeah. that yeah. sleep. Go into a and overdrive. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And then they <laughs> won't go to sleep and they just scream mm. and um, the scream just used to make me oh. wild. Yeah. And in the end, I used to give myself a time out. So I'd think, okay, he's fed, I know that. I know he's not hungry. He's changed, so he's not wet. Yeah. He's uh, warm. I know I've, I've put a blanket around him and he's in bed, he's in his cot and he needs his sleep. 
yeah. and I've just locked the doors and I've locked ev I've shut every single door between his bedroom and the lounge room yes. and I've turned yes. the music up. I was yeah. about to do Because I need thing. to calm down because I'm just yeah. going to get wild. Yeah. Yeah. You do, you, so because it, it's, too, it's too... It's just... It's too raw. Yeah, once I've lost it, I've lost it, mm. you know. And, and, and the parent needs that break. Yeah. You yeah. need the break. So, yeah. oh, oh, any parent, well, well or unwell, um, you need that break. Yeah. So, so, what, so what can practitioners be doing then to support I, these kind of um, initiatives yeah, for I parents? Think yeah. Something like when you were talking about language, um, that made me think that sometimes parents, um, they're not really aware of the language that they're using. Uh, they might have a lot of resentments and these kind of things will, will help to work on that. But in the, the direct here and now, um, the practitioner can sometimes uh, gently um, remind the parent of the language that they're using, okay. actually draw attention to it, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. question why they're using that language, and even in the conversation, um, start to um, put in alternative words, you know, more compassionate words. Um, and sometimes the parent will just pick up on that. Okay. So it can also be about how that practitioner models conversations yeah. as well. Models to, conversations about the child. Yeah, you mean, yeah, to right. give the parents some skills. Uh, because if you're hell-bent in this situation, yeah. and you've been like this for a while, you're full of trauma, you're not thinking right, mm. your kids are in there, you're really resentful of mm. them, you know, because mm. everything is bad and negative you're going to have to have some skills to kind of pull yourself out of that situation. Uh -huh, yeah. um, and the practitioner can just start to kind of get you up on the beach, you know, mm -hmm. the sand yeah. of sandy shore of, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be like this. And maybe work at looking at um, some support services that might be available to that parent, yeah, mm -hmm. whether they, yeah. they can actually get a break or mm -hmm. they it can even go to a group. Yeah. I mean, the, the most comforting um, thing for any parent is when you talk to another parent and they have a similar story. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, yes. I'm not alone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. you do feel, you know, Absolutely. parenting is very isolating. It's, it's yeah. an isolating yeah. experience. It's yeah. a very isolating yeah. experience yeah. and it, it, it's a tough gig. Yeah. And it is tough. if yeah. you've got extra layers mm -hmm. that are made, making it a lot more difficult, mm -hmm. then um, you need that support. And mm -hmm. if the practitioner has access or um, to, to some, some uh, support services that they feel would be useful, mm -hmm. even if that when the when the parent leaves for that session, giving them some mm -hmm. actual numbers and okay. something, oh, to, take for me. A yeah. piece something of paper to take away, something to take away, because right, right. then they, they yep. they'll th that piece of paper will come out yep. and they'll look at that I number had, um, and you know what they'll ring it. Yeah. Can, I, can I just um, yeah pause a bit because I'm just thinking uh, we've had a couple of questions come in that are kind of. Um, provide a bit, a bit of a link between this theme and the next one we're hoping nice. to speak about. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, sure. I thought um, there's a couple of questions that are, revolve around like beginning conversations with, with families. And so, um, uh, so one, one here from, um, uh, from uh, Sarah asks a bit about, you know, um, in, you know what are some um, appropriate questions to begin to open dialogue, you know, with mm. parents, with families. So in the situation perhaps where parents are um, not just speaking negatively about their children, mm. but also, you know, parents that are facing uh, multiple adversities mm. uh, in, their, in their lives and in their children's lives, what are some appropriate, you know, opening questions that can be asked of parents and, um, yeah, to, to begin to get that conversation going, you know. So imagining families as you can well imagine that um, are going through pretty significant times, mm. yeah. tough times. How, how can practitioners begin I, I like um, asking people, um, tell me a bit about yourself. Yes, that's and, what I was um, going to say. And then also parents love to talk about their children, usually. Tell me a bit about your children and tell me a bit about what um, an average day might look like for you yeah. and um, what are some of the challenges that you face at the moment and asking people what um, do you, what, what concerns do you have about um, your situation at the moment? What mm. would you like to change about your situation? Okay. What are you hoping yep. for? Things mm. like that. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important to put the ball <coughs> in the parents' mm. court and ask yeah. them what is, what's what's top on your list. What's bugging you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Open questions are really okay. good. Yeah. 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 What's your story? Okay. Yeah. What's your story? Yeah. 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 I think. Uh, sometimes um, in that situation the parent is just going to be so incredibly overwhelmed with stuff and so to help with that overwhelming um, maybe externalize it you know have have write it down um, the, the issues so you yeah. can prioritize them and break them up and okay. just, you know yeah. this can be dealt with now this can be dealt with down here mm. you know? yes so it's it kind of mm. creates a space mm -hmm. uh, for that mm -hmm. parent mm -hmm. even asking, I, I got, sorry, even asking what 
what would you like to get out of the time that we have together? Okay. Yes. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 I think it might be good just for me to name kind of the um, the challenge that we're sort of um, getting onto now on account of those questions. So, you know, when parents are facing immediate and multiple adversities, how can practitioners help parents remain uh, positive and hopeful and uh, mindful of their child's well-being? Um, you know, even when problems seem overwhelming. So, you know, in the face of overwhelming adversities or problems, yeah, how can hopefulness Positivity, I guess, being mindful of children. How, how can that be um, uh, be supported uh, mm. by practitioners? Yeah. I think by breaking it down gives you mm. an opportunity to look for specific specific examples where hope can be inserted. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. You know where you can have the possibility of true true uh, beginning resolutions. Yeah. Mm. Um, so when you say breaking it down, breaking what down? Um, breaking down the um, the overwhelming issues. You okay. know, so you're presenting with um, overwhelming adversity, um, and mm -hmm. it's you know the parent is just going to think, oh, there's so much. How can I possibly change this? Yeah. It's their life. Yes. Um, so if you break it down, externalise it, uh, you can then pinpoint different things. Mm. You know, I can. Uh, you know, this can be done in this way mm. and, you know, you can also then bring the child into that conversation. Um, I think that one of the tough ones okay. is when um, some of that adversity can't be changed uh, quickly. Yeah. So, for example, in the, in the issue mm. of not finding secure housing, you yes. know, you can go on the housing list, but um, it can yes. take quite some time yeah. for that to actually happen. Mm. So, sure. um, arming parents with an idea of what, what is the minimum that you need to be doing for your child to keep your child well. Mm. So, um, you know, I, I, and I think for, parenting doesn't have to be that complicated in terms of um, what's good for children. Mm. Feeding kids, I mean, you can, it's pretty easy to feed kids reasonably nutritious food at, at yeah. fairly low cost and not a lot of hassle. But what kids really, really need is someone who's attentive. So, and it okay. doesn't have to be all day. Mm. Mm. If you've got half an hour a day to actually sit there and listen to your kids' stories, yeah. mm. I mean, they seem like long stories and sometimes you just wish they'd cut to the chase. <laughs> but um, list, being able to actually listen to that child, be supportive and, and, and love them, even if it's for that half an hour, um, is brilliant for child welfare. Yeah, yeah. so again, with the practitioner, yeah. I think, um, uh, after listening to the parent with the adversities um, and the overwhelmingness mm. of their situation, yeah. trying to, again, I think, pull out a couple of positives or break it down into, OK, what can we do? What can we start doing this week mm. for your child? It's that just something simple. Yeah. Once once they've listened to the story, that... that it, can help build the relationship, yes. um, yeah. make the parent feel good because they they feel they're doing something really positive, and then something that the child's going to benefit from, and yep. and the practitioner, I mean, look, we all realise that can just be something really simple, and keeping it within yeah. the boundaries that that parent can cope with. Sure. Mm. So sometimes positives though can be pretty hard to pull out at That's times, right. can't That's they? Right. They can be hard for practitioners to... We can, yeah, you, you, you can, can always, always find them. them. Yeah. It can yeah. be very, it, it's That's very good. hard for the parent to pull it Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Yeah. But the practitioner will, will that's what the practitioner so will be able to be looking to. for that. So yep. what, what helps them do that, do you think? From a parent's perspective, what do you think helps if someone practitioners with depression, to fill out how... If someone how, with depression got up and got out of bed and made their kids lunch, that's a real win. That's a win. That's great. Because it can be so hard to get up out of bed. Yeah. Yeah. I remember I used to stay in bed until the kids left for school mm. and I, I had to get them really early to be able to make their own lunches and I did facilitate that. So I guess that's, that's a good thing, that's a win. Um, they had a box where it had all the sandwich meat, the lunch, the <laughs> salad, the lettuce and the margarine. So they just had to get that out and make the sandwich. But, okay. And I, I guess I did that. But a practitioner is going to be looking for those things yeah. to say. Yes. Um, oh, and even to say, how did you do that? Like, how did you get out of bed? How, how do you manage to do it on weekdays, you know, and, and the, the well, parents are going to talk about the values and, yeah. and their goals for the children and, and mm. what's important to them and you can really reinforce that. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. And on, on that note, if you're um, in a refuge, say, and you're homeless, whatever, housing might be a long-term yep. way down the track and you can acknowledge that and yep. say, look, you're not going to be housed for a certain amount yep. of time. Yeah. That's off the card. Yeah, yeah. But you're here, yep. you're here looking after your kids, you know, you can then talk about why are you here? You're here to have a safe home for your kids. Yeah. I can see that you love them and care for them. Mm. Okay. Um, so even the worst situations yeah. can have yep. some positives in them. So even the person, the parent being there can oh, be... Yeah. Um, yes. It's a positive. It can Absolutely. be a positive or, yeah. Um, 
uh, there can be more that can, that can be said about that in terms of its... Um, Absolutely. Uh, the parent might not realise this. No. Um, in fact, they, it's probably, probably likely they won't. won't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, making things really practical for um, parents as well around the, the child wellbeing. Mm. So okay. if it's something like, hey, um, let, why, don't we, why don't we work on, uh, for the next month, just reading a story to them once a day, mm -hmm. um, mm. either before bedtime or sometime in the afternoon or, or something like that. I mean, that's, that's pretty practical. It yeah. doesn't take a long time. Mm. And um, uh, you can even talk to parents about what time of day do you feel better? Because often people with mental illness might feel okay, and some people will feel okay in the morning. Um, some people will feel okay in the afternoon, absolutely horrible in the morning. So when are good times for you? Okay. And mm -hmm. how about in this time, we just give 15 minutes or half an hour to going for a walk with our child or reading a story or just some sort of interaction. Something mm. that they can do. And yeah, it's, it's doable. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, and I think right. the key thing um, to, for the practitioner maybe to address with the parent is that you're not always going to enjoy this mm. because you're not well yeah, yet. Yeah, absolutely. But, that, but that, okay. that's okay. It, yeah. It's okay if you don't yeah, enjoy it. Totally. Because you know what? Your child is going to get a great benefit yeah. because you will enjoy it. Yeah. Okay. It will come. Mm -hmm. It will come as things slowly improve. Yeah. It, it, it will become more enjoyable because probably every task for a parent that's in, um, suffering from or in adverse uh, situation, yeah. you know, anything, you know, is going to make them stressed and more. So, oh, the story, how am I going to fit that in? But it's like just, just do one thing mm. um, and, you know, you will, it will make a difference. Okay. This just is, the smallest this is, thing will make how, a difference. How, how can you ensure, though, that parents don't, how can practitioners ensure that parents don't end up kind of feeling like a bit of a failure if they're not able to pull that sort of stuff off, if they're not able to carry that you've out. Well, what, what can you can help explore that. You can yes, find out. Make you, sure you can say, can OK, how did you go reading that story? I didn't do it. Can you tell me about that? What, what, um, what were some of the barriers? Was it, um, was it a timing thing? Did the children not want to sit? Or, and you can explore it and you can be very non-judgmental about it. And, and also find out what it is that the parent already does. Yes. Um, and, and work build with off that. that. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. You're, okay. you're doing something. The yeah. Finding out what they're already uh, yeah, doing. That, maybe they, they go for a walk every day with a dog, you yeah. know. Yeah. Can you bring your can kid we along? Can the child? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or yeah. finding out something that the parent can do. Yep. Yes. You know, if the parent... It's, it's got to be achievable. Yes, and then you can the get them into that sort of dopamine relevant. loop, you know, oh, I did it. Yeah. And then you get the boost because yeah. you did it. I really like how you said um, if we can get parents to behave in a certain way that's good for the child, even though they might not feel like it. Yes. Because you, your feelings like. become huge with yes. mental illness and they just, they feel like they're overwhelming and they feel like they control you. Like, mm. I cannot yes. do that, I just cannot bring myself yes. to do that. But if we realise that feelings are just feelings, they come yes. and go, and they're not necessarily, they don't even necessarily mean anything, they're just there. Yeah. Mm. But sometimes I can behave in a way that's really good for my child, even though I'm not feeling it. Mm. And maybe yeah. my feelings might change when I start to behave in a different way. And that, separate that, the two. that, that yeah. was um, one of the key things that um, yeah. Yeah. I was, uh, that, that was given to me. Mm -hmm. And really with both children, I used that for in the especially in the early years, um, I'm sure I still use it today. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, uh, now I don't feel like it, uh, but it you know, and it really does pay off because mm -hmm. you do feel good that you've done yeah. it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and it's not faking it either because it's actually in line with our values. Mm. We value our child's welfare. We value our children's development, and um, we value caring for our children. So. It's not faking it. We're actually acting directly in okay. line with our values. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I think also in terms of um, mm. the overwhelming as aspect, actually having something written down, like some sort of plan, mm. um, you know, yep. so that parents Love can actually refer to it. Down. Yeah. Otherwise, mm. you can sit there and, and hear all this. You walk yep. outside, it's just gone. And what sort night. of plan do you mean? Oh, what, you know, this is what, what, this is what you're going to do. Um, you know, these are the steps you're going to take mm -hmm. to ensure yep. that you're building on the relationship you have oh, okay. with your child. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm. You know, this is what we're addressing here, here, mm -hmm. and here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just kind of write it yeah. out mm -hmm. um, so that you know the parent can. I really appreciated it. that. I yeah. had a couple of psychologists, and the first one didn't write anything down for me, and I can't remember anything that yeah, we talked yeah. about. The second one, I was a little bit more directive, so I said, "Look, could you give me some stuff to think about in the next month before seeing you? Because I don't know what to think about. My brain mm. is just yes. everywhere." And she was great. So she'd scribble little notes and she'd say, here's where we are here and this is where we're going to get to. And 
she'd write some stuff down for me to think about and I could go away with that and I yes. felt yeah, like need I had something, yeah, got sure. something. And yeah. then you can bring it back as well. Yeah, exactly. Say, oh yeah, I did this and yep. yeah, and that was really good and it's a conversation starter and, and okay. you can yeah, refer right, to it. Right, right. And the other um, thing that helped me it's was, true, it happened. was tick lists. Did yes. you ever, I don't yes. know if you ever did that, but yes. I used to oh, write down things to do. That's very nice. So it was like... <laughs> it, it, it worked. Once I got well. onto this, it was like a it was like a life hack for me. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, and even stuff that I'd already done. Like, if I'd forgotten to make my list by ten o'clock, I'd write down, get kids off to school, make lunches and stuff, and then I'd tick them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even oh. before I'd already done it. Yeah. And it was it's this important. visual thing of going tick, tick, tick. Wow, I'm I'm actually making progress today. You, yeah. Yes. Can I um, just highlight a particular aspect of this question? I think it might be good just to sort of um, hone in on a bit. Like, it's about when. Um, on account of the multiple adversities that parents are facing and the way they're being described, I guess, by parents, practitioners might have a sense that the child's well-being is kind of being lost in all mm. of that. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. That their children's well-being is being mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. in, in what's going on. Yeah, and, and so, uh, again, I'm interested in your ideas about how, what are some ways that practitioners can helpfully bring the child's well-being Yep. into the conversation in, in amongst lots of discussion and talk mm. about adversities mm. like well, what is it that can how can practitioners do that in a way that's again not silencing or shaming of I parents? think practitioners have got to give parents information about what is child well-being I suppose mm. I didn't have an understanding of what child well-being was until I actually started doing some stuff with emerging minds and then I realized what constituted child well-being um, give you an example. When I talked to my children about the fact that I'd just been diagnosed with a mental illness, uh, it was a terrifying conversation. But um, I only learnt afterwards what I probably should have said. You know, things like, um, it's not your fault, um, dad's going to get better because dad's getting treatment. It's, you don't have to make dad better, it's not your responsibility to I make can. dad better. Right, right. Mm. You can't catch it, and here are some supports for you. And I didn't have that mm. language yet. So I think if practitioners can arm parents with language and ideas about child well-being, so you've actually got something objective, because child well-being to me sounds like this really nebulous idea of what is child well-being. Sure. Mm. But if, mm. if practitioners can sort of say, this is what constitutes child well-being, and here are some things that you can do to ensure that your child is, is okay. Mm. And, 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 and tying that in with what the parent can achieve, yeah. we, and we exactly. don't want to be offering them anything that is not achievable for that parent. No, that's, that's right. Going to we don't want to put child well-being up there. Yeah. And also yeah. just bringing the child into the conversation mm. as well. Mm. So if you're talking about problems, you know, which the parent is having, it's obviously going to affect the child yes. to some degree. So just directly saying, well, and this, you know, um, can help your child, blah, blah, blah. And so actually making sure that they're a part of that conversation. Yes. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What about, there's been a couple of questions around... Um, uh, parenting programs actually you know mm. so I might just reach for the questions um, so oh yeah so um, May asks uh, how can practitioners get parents buy-in on attending you know regular parenting programs like you might have heard or may not have heard like programs mm. like um, Circle of Security and the yep. Triple mm. P this kind of thing mm. Um, amidst parents' uh, busy life and I guess the multiple things parents are up again, you know, mm. up against. How can how can practitioners make this work for parents? So, like I guess, yeah, again for parents facing multiple adversities, where on account of the child's well-being, practitioners might be thinking, "Here's a, I've got a program in the mind that could be really helpful for this parent and this child." One way you could sell what, it yeah. is that there's always strain in your relationship with your children. There's always things about parenting that bug you and there's stress and you know we were talking earlier about just kids just doing stuff and not thinking about it yeah. spilling milk everywhere yeah. and you know this sort of thing so there's always aggravation I think if practitioners could sell the idea of um, suggesting a parenting program to parents in saying that this will actually potentially make things better for you, you have yeah. better experience as a parent. Mm. It might potentially alleviate some stressors and some issues that are going on. Mm. I remember... Skill building. When yeah, I was um, 
when I was in the refuge system, um, I was actually in that situation. Okay. And um, I was advised about a circle of security um, parenting program. Okay. And I remember thinking, how on earth am I going to mm. be able to do that? Yes. Yep. You know, um, mm. it was, I was living in the city. I had no transport, no car. I didn't know where anything was. It was, I had to catch trains there with my kids. Um, and so yeah. what helped me was, first of all, um, the person told me that it was a good program and it had been going on for a while and it was very respected and very helpful. And so they sold the program basically on its merits mm -hmm. um, and that other parents have found it so helpful. Mm -hmm. um, and there wasn't any shaming involved in that conversation like you know, so I didn't get the sense that I needed to go because I was a bad, bad parent. parent. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and then we looked at the practical aspects of going there. How are you going to go there? When are you going right. to go there? What time works with you? When, yes. when, which start date works with you? And so I was kind of guided in the actual practical yep. aspect mm. of getting Lovely. there. Lovely. And yeah. it wasn't so that bad. So acknowledging that there are barriers, but what can we do about those How barriers? How can we get around those barriers? And, and, yeah. and to break it down, because even for yep. me, when I was unwell and I'd have to go to uh, see my uh, professional uh, health professional mm -hmm. and I would actually take my child with me which was uh, I think really beneficial mm -hmm. uh, but just even me working that out and to get there but um, I think in the end because I knew I was benefiting from mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's I mean you can't make them but mm -hmm. yeah but it's you can make it achievable it Talk yeah. about the yeah. try and break it down on, on how it could be done even on a week week by week basis. Can you get there this week? What do you think? Yeah. Mm. Like it has me wondering what, what a practitioner needs to be mindful of before even suggesting a program because you know um, Emma you spoke a bit about how when to hear the suggestion was was initially oh how am I going to do that yeah, yeah. yeah, kind of thing in a way it could add it could potentially add to the overwhelmingness yes. Yes. for yeah. a parent's circumstances. I just, I just wonder uh, yeah. what, a, what a practitioner well, needs to be mindful of before kind of proposing I, these ideas. I think ideas, anything's going to add to the overwhelmingness but if it's sold correctly, and if the practitioner really believes that this mm -hmm. th this parent is really going to benefit from mm -hmm. this, yeah. um, try and work out together how at least they can get there to one session, yeah. and then yeah, I mean, yeah. and hopefully it starts to alleviate the mm. overwhelming nature yeah. of the parenting mm. interaction. Mm. But I think one of the skills, Chris, that um, that I use a little bit now that I'm a peer support worker, using my lived experience working mm. with parents, mm. is mm. Um, the idea of motivational interviewing. Okay. which asks yeah. parents, you know, what are some of your reservations about doing this? Yeah. So you, you do have some motivation to do it, um, which should, you know, your, your parenting skills, your relationship with your child, etc. But what are some of, some of the reservations in exploring those? Mm. Um, the downsides, well, the downsides are, I, I'll, you know, I need money for transport, yeah. I don't have the time, etc. Et et so cooking we've got to food. name them up. Yeah, um, you've got to acknowledge them. Yeah, right and way. acknowledge them yeah, and, then, you do. And, then, mm -hmm. and then deal with them. So mm. motivational interviewing is a skill I think is mm. really good. Mm. Mm. I'm a bit mindful of the time, folks, and but I also um, I wanted to sort of uh, touch on the uh, fourth practice challenge. Although I think some of what we've said already may have covered off on part of it, but just in case there are other things that come sure. to mind as we begin discussing it. So the fourth practice challenge, again raised by other practitioners, how can practitioners help parents both focus on the social and emotional well-being of their children? without feeling stigmatised for their experiences of adversity. So again, this concern about stigmatising parents is really prominent for practitioners. Yeah. How, how can practitioners help parents focus on their kids? Yeah. I think um, at the very start of it, creating a space um, for the parent to talk. You mm. know, um, the, the parent might not want to share their story, um, they might have done it a thousand times already, but at least mm. creating that space mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to do that. And then that kind of, um, says that you're you're not your problem, you know, um, yeah. mm -hmm. your person beyond all this. You got to this yeah. point. Yeah, you're not defined by your mental illness. Yeah. 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 So when you say creating a space, can you say a bit more from your experience about how practitioners have done that for you in helpful ways? In, you know? um, I guess uh, asking me about um, how I got there, you know, yeah. um, would you like to tell me some of your story? Right, right, um, right. Just something yeah. basic is having the opportunity to share your story okay. um, yep. because sometimes I really needed to, to speak yeah. it. Mm. Sometimes I didn't want to at all because I'd done it too many times but just knowing that yeah, I was right. going to be listened to and validated was a huge thing and to be given that option. Yeah, it's, it's difficult for practitioners because if they're only going to see you as a one-off, for you to tell your story and open up, it can be a bit re-traumatising and That's you can get quite you upset and then need leave to have that. that option. So, yeah. But if you're working with people long term, the key question is not what's wrong with you, 
but what happened to what you? What happened? Yeah. 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 So that's that whole trauma so informed and and use yeah way of asking it people. differently, using yeah. different language, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay. making making them feel comfortable mm -hmm, to tell their mm -hmm, story, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you know I think for me uh, many times I would get you know you've done a really good job. Mm. Even though you never think you are, mm. but or have done, you've done a really, really good job. Okay, so how can we build on this? Okay, yeah. Um, so it's building up uh, the parent, yeah. so they feel confident to uh, tell their story. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, as as John said, normalising that you know, parenting is a tough gig mm -hmm, for mm -hmm, everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it. Everyone feels guilt and shame and mm -hmm. blame. Every sort of parent, mm -hmm. um, and that people are pretty self-critical too. And yes. yeah. we set yeah. a high standard for ourselves. We do, yeah, we do. Yeah. And, and I the think shoulds, all the things that we should we do. Have you, know, you, you can get kids. killed by the shoulds. Absolutely. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, I think um, yeah that you know oh, I'm not doing that. You know, social media hasn't helped with no. any of yeah. any of that. But at the end of the day. Um, yeah, the child's needs are really quite simple. Mm. Uh, yep. They just need a loving, yeah, they need to be uh, unconditionally loved. loving yeah. parent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. that doesn't need to be there mm -hmm. no. on tap 24-7. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that parent human? needs... You've got to self-care. That, that, that parent yeah. needs to have self-care mm -hmm. yeah. to parent well. Uh, that's the biggest thing, probably. And One if of you've the biggest got a mental illness, you need to recover. So recovery takes some focus as well. Yes. But I think linking in parental recovery with child wellbeing is important too. Yes. The better you are, you're travelling, the better your children will travel. A absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you look at things differently. Because yeah. if you're recovering well and you're giving yourself that time to recover and you're getting the right help, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> uh, the parenting does change. Right, right. It really does. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's not as overwhelming. It's uh, not as frustrating. Yeah. It's just, mm -hmm. And can I say, with mental illness and recovery, in 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 my case, and I'm, I'm, I've no doubt it's happened in your case as well. What you've learned about recovery and about well-being for yourself, mm. you then pass on to your kids. Oh, absolutely. So I think yes. we can end up with even more resilient kids. So one of the things I do with my kids, because I had no help-seeking skills, particularly mm. as a bloke, mm. you don't want to get any help. You feel independent. So when blokes really hit the wall, um, we start to think of suicide because I don't want to get any help for anyone. I can't solve the problem, so I need to take myself out. Mm. But um, learning to help-seek was a really important skill. So I train my kids now to help-seek. Mm. So my daughter had some issues one time and I said, You've got four choices. You, you got, you've got to go to school and face this. She wouldn't yeah. face. She wouldn't face something at school. So I said, you can talk to the social worker. You can talk to a trusted teacher. You can get your friends on board and disclose to them what's happening. Get some support, or we're going to call Kids Helpline. It's you've. That's your four choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She chose to get her friends on board, and they said, yeah, we've got your back, girl. And you know, they got around her and really supported her. Mm. But she has called Kids Helpline in the past, yeah. so yeah. she's so learned to. They're learning those skills, yeah. so that's I think right. kids can come out really, really well. Uh, yes. uh, no, I agree because even with my own experiences, um, and also all the language that's exposed to children these days, suicides mm -hmm. talked about yep. openly. It's yep. used in joke exactly. and so you're talking about a lot of things yep. earlier um, and for me because of my own experiences mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. emotional development and growth through all the years of um, recovery mm -hmm. I'm, I feel as though I'm able to give um, my children some yeah. skills yeah. or just to look at I, things differently. Yeah. Yeah. And so again, I wonder for what are the implications of what you're saying for practitioners? I to guess. maybe look at things differently, yeah. and give them um, give the some practical skills like the kids helpline. You know, um, right, right. yes, uh, yeah. training the kids, training the parent to train the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, because uh, this is um, my kids also use the kids helpline. Yeah, lovely. And that was given to me to give to the children oh, by a practitioner. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't know about it. No. So just practical skills. What um, supports are out there for your kids? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that also kind of passes a burden on a little yeah. bit too. Yeah, yeah. and that that's just made me think, even with the practitioners, um, now, now I'm sure a lot of them look at these parents in this particular way, but, but, but th these parents that are struggling are actually have such wealth of great things about them as a parent yes. mm. that, that, that that's just not tapped into. Yeah, right. And it's right. really about encouraging them to 
encouraging the parent to tap into yes. those great. You're a, you know, you're a survivor. Mm. You're, you, you're, you're doing. A, you're very resilient, um, and you know, if we can help you yeah. keep keep your children, keep them safe, them grow, then. Mm. Yeah. Colleen, I think that's a really lovely and significant kind of point for us to um, begin to finish uh, on uh, today. So, um, yeah, I'd like to thank you, each of you, for your sharing you. your yeah, know-how and your experience, uh, your perspectives. Um, and, um, yeah, thank you all for um, uh, engaging with us in this uh, webcast. I'm sorry to those folks who we did not uh, respond to their questions, but we appreciate them uh, nonetheless. Um, so thanks very much for joining us. Um, there's a couple of things I'd just like to um, just like to mention um, before before we finish. Firstly, um, you know, if uh, what we've talked about today is of uh, further interest to you, if you'd like to um, follow up more around some of the um, uh, some of the things that have been spoken about today, I really encourage you to uh, access the resources that Emerging Minds and the National Workforce Centre for Child Mental Health has available from our website emergingminds.com.au. Um, uh, yeah, this this uh, conversation has been recorded and will be uh, available uh, uh, shortly in a couple of months or in a Monday next Monday um, uh, on the MHPN website. So you're very welcome to um, access it again there. Go back over go back over the best bits and <laughs> and uh, yeah, continue to reflect on what's being spoken about today. Yeah, please, again, um, spend a couple of minutes filling out the um, exit survey feedback form. That's really helpful for all of us. And, a great, and I think also a great acknowledgement. We Beg your pardon? another one coming up after this. Yeah, that's right. We have a second uh, webinar um, uh, in, uh, at um, 3 o'clock um, Eastern time where three practitioners will be addressing these uh, same challenges, really um, drawing on what, right. um, what John and Emmy and Colleen have spoken about today and then um, extending on that through their own uh, knowledge and experience as well. Um, uh, so please, yeah, I'd encourage you to uh, tune into that one as well if that's possible. Um, and we also have Emerging Minds and MHPN have an additional webinar around this theme of uh, trauma and the impact of adverse childhood experiences um, uh, next Thursday, the uh, 6th of June at 7.15 as well. So you'd be very welcome to link in with that as well. So yeah, thanks very much folks.